Howdy, my name is Nonat, and welcome to the deep dive for the Inventor class in Pathfinder 2E, released in Guns and Gears, which just came out yesterday. I am beyond excited that these options are now officially in the game. Gunslinger and Inventor have been really up there for my hype list. I know Secrets of Magic was cool, and I haven't even had time to go over everything in that book, but it's time to talk about inventing stuff. But before we get started, I invented something myself. It's called the subscription button. You can actually see I've implemented it right below the video. It's that big red button that says subscribe. If you don't see it, don't worry. You're probably already all set. But in case it's still red and says subscribe, click it. I promise you won't be disappointed. But before we do get too deep into this, I do want to thank our generous sponsor for today's video, Roll for Combat, and their new Battle Zoo line of supplement books for Pathfinder 2E. You may have heard me talk about the Battle Zoo Bestiary before, and that is on its way out. It might even be out by the time this releases. But did you know that Roll for Combat is also working on an entire line of third party supplements for the system? They have some really cool stuff coming up that you can see right here. Personally, I am incredibly excited for the Dragon Ancestry that Mark Seifter is working on. And yes, this is the same Mark Seifter who is a developer for Pathfinder 2E. He's been working to make dragons a playable ancestry. Like for your player character. So you can play. As a dragon! I can't wait to see this come out. Their entire line of books are available for pre-order right now on their Kickstarter page, which will be linked in the description and the pinned comment below. And if you order them now, they will be cheaper than if you wait for the full release. So if you want to save a few dollars, and let me tell you, a few dollars goes a long way right now. If you want to save a few bucks, pre-order them now and get them right when they come out. As an added benefit, if you don't want to wait for them to come out, when you pre-order the book, you also get the PDF version instantly, so you can have access to these awesome supplements before the physical copies are even through development. Sounds like a pretty cool deal to me. Check out the link in the description. Thank you so much to Roll for Combat for sponsoring the channel. You guys are awesome. We love you. The comments love you. Let's talk about inventing stuff. The Inventor is an uncommon class. This means your GM has full right to say, no, there are no Inventors in my world, which is sad, but also understandable. It is, of course, an intelligence-based class, but it is not a spellcaster. This means the Inventor is an intelligence-based martial class, the first of its kind, if you don't count Mastermind Rogues, because they're stinky. They also get 8 plus their con mod in hit points, pretty average. Inventors are only trained in perception and reflex saves, but they are expert in fortitude saves and will saves, which is kind of surprising. I guess it's just because they're very smart, but I don't think will saves when I think inventor. Of course, they're trained in crafting and three plus your intelligence and extra skills. Believe it or not, the inventor is trained in simple and martial weapons, so you'll have a wide variety of available weapons for your inventor to use. They can also wear medium armor, so you can really be decked out in full chainmail with a greatsword as an inventor if you really want to, and I think that's super cool. At level 1, inventors already have a unique action all their own, Overdrive, and there's already a bunch of flavor you get to add to your own character on how it works. Overdrive does exactly what it sounds like. You send yourself into Overdrive, and it describes this. It could be muscle stimulants, it could be pistons attached to your armor that make you hit harder, and it's really just whatever you want it to be. You can get clever with it and flavor it so that Overdrive works with your character. Once per round, you can make a crafting check equal to a normal DC for your level. GMs, if you don't know how to set DCs, check out this video here from a long time ago. Should you critically succeed this crafting check, all of your attacks deal your intelligence modifier in extra damage for one minute. This means if you have a high strength and a high intelligence and you overdrive, those stack. This means at level one, if you have a plus four intelligence and a plus three strength and you go into crit success overdrive, yeah, that's seven extra flat damage on all attacks at level one. Should you normal succeed, it's the same effect, but only half your intelligence modifier, which again, is not that bad. One action, crafting check, which you're gonna be great at, normal success, two bonus damage to everything you do. 
That's like weapon specialization, which for any other martial class is what, level 7? What's interesting is if you normal succeed, you can still use overdrive again for the chance to critically succeed with it. So you can upgrade a success into a crit success if you have the extra action. Like this could be better than just attacking for their third action at minus 10 or whatever, just for the chance to upgrade your overdrive. This does not extend the duration, however, and it doesn't really do anything if you've already crit succeeded once. But also be careful. If you roll that nat 1 and crit fail, your overdrive ends prematurely, which is rough. One minute after you activate overdrive or on a critical failure, all your gizmos are overrun, so you can't use it again for one minute, basically until the end of the encounter. Now let's talk about what makes the inventor an inventor. Their innovation! This is pretty much the inventor subclass, and there are three to talk about. Armor inventors, weapon inventors, and construct inventors. The innovation is an item just like anything else and can be destroyed. It has the same durability as other items of that level. But if it is destroyed, it takes only one day of downtime to fix or recreate it. They all have really unique augmentations to make even an armor inventor different from other armor inventors, so let's get talking about them, starting with the armor inventor. Armor inventors have two different types of armor they can work with, power armor and the subterfuge suit. Power armor is basically half plate, plus four to armor class, plus one dex cap, minus two check penalty if you don't meet the 16 strength requirement, and two bulk. This is, of course, for a strength-based inventor, and at the same time, we have the Suttrafuge suit. Only a plus one to armor class, but a plus four AC bonus and only a 10 strength requirement. So that is obviously for a dex-based inventor. What makes this really rough is if you want to make something like a dex-based gnome inventor, you're struggling because you're taking a penalty to strength. This means your strength is starting at 8, which is not high enough for either of these armors. So you'll need to sacrifice a boost somewhere to get your strength up to 10 to use the Suttrafuge suit, and there is no way to make a level 1 gnome or any ancestry with a penalty to strength. There's no way to get them to 16 strength without optional flaws for the power suit. Just like normal armor, power armor can be inscribed with potency and property runes. What's kind of fun about the armor is that everybody but you, even though it is technically medium armor, they are untrained with it. Only you know how to wear and use your armor. At first level, the inventor does get to pick one modification for their innovation, so let's look at the ones available to the armor inventor. Harmonic Oscillator gives the inventor 3 plus half their level in damage resistance against force and sonic damage, and when you enter overdrive, you get 2 additional resistance. That's really good against something like Magic Missile or other things at low level that deal those damage types. Metallic Reactance is the same effect, except to Acid and Electricity. Muscular Exoskeleton is only available to armor inventors who selected the Power Suit, and while in Overdrive, you gain a plus one bonus to your athletics checks, and if you happen to be a master in crafting, which you can get as early as level 7, that bonus increases to a plus two, not too bad. Otherworldly Protection works just like the other damage resistance modifications, except to negative damage, or if you heal from negative damage, you get resistance to positive damage, like a Dampir. Additionally, you gain that resistance to any type of alignment damage that would hurt you. If you are lawful good, you gain resistance to chaotic and evil damage, and vice versa. What's weird about this one, and we think it might be a typo, I haven't actually asked any Paizo devs about this, is this one does not get the plus two resistance overdrive bonus. I'm not sure if that's something they forgot to write down, or because this one technically gives you up to three resistances, it doesn't get the overdrive bonus. I think it's a typo because everything else gets an overdrive bonus, so it's probably how I'm going to run it if somebody works with this. Phlogistonic Regulator is another damage resistance modification, however it is a little bit weaker because it takes more common damage types into the resistance. This gives you half your level of resistance against cold and fire damage. Keep in mind, it does not give you the three plus half your level. I think it's just because especially fire damage is so much more common than something like acid or force. 
You do still get the two bonus resistance while in overdrive though. So at level one, if you're overdriving, that's resistance three to fire. At level one, that's pretty big. Speed boosters, your movement speed increases by five feet and while in overdrive, 10 feet. Keep in mind, these are status bonuses to move speed so it won't stack with everything. Subtle dampeners for the Sutrifuge suit is very similar to the one for the power suit. Instead of getting a bonus to athletics, this gives you a bonus to bl bonus? This gives you a bonus to stealth, plus one by default and plus two once you are a master in crafting. The Construct Inventor is a little different from the other ones as they effectively get an animal companion like a druid, ranger, or beast master. This animal companion just happens to be made out of clockwork. Just like a ranger or druid, they can spend one action to give their construct two actions or two to give them three. It functions pretty much identically to a normal companion for a character. But let's look into the construct a little deeper. The construct companion is trained in unarmed strikes and unarmored defense, all saving throws and perception, acrobatics, and athletic skills. Because they are not mind smart big brain creature like me am, they can't use any skills that require higher intelligence. At level one, you do get to determine whether your companion is small or medium. This doesn't make any big change, but is really good for flavor or just kind of cool character ideas. All constructs have access to a bludgeoning 1d8 damage fist attack, but their secondary attack is customizable. I mean, not super customizable, but you can choose between slashing or piercing. Regardless of what you pick, it does deal 1d6 damage and has agile and finesse, which is great because it means you can attack with the 1d8 and then make your second attack with the 1d6 agile for a lower multiple attack penalty. The construct's ability modifiers are as shown on screen and it begins with 10 plus six plus its constitution modifier in hit points. It gains six plus its constitution in additional hit points every time you level up. Unlike normal constructs, your companion upon reaching zero hit points actually makes death saves like normal characters and upon hitting dying four does become destroyed. However, you can stabilize it with a crafting check. Be careful though, your construct does not become wounded. Rather, if it reaches zero hit points twice in a single 10 minute period, it is destroyed and must be rebuilt through one day of downtime. But, and this is a really big but, your construct is still a construct, so it is immune to <clears throat> Bleed, death effects, disease, doom, drain, fatigue, healing, necromancy, non-lethal attacks, paralyzed, poison, sickened, and unconscious. This also means it cannot benefit from healing spells, but you can take the repair crafting action to restore hit points to your construct companion. Its only precise sense is sight, and it has a 25 foot move speed. The construct companion advances much like a normal animal companion, gaining increased statistics, increased damage dice, so on and so forth. Whew, that was a good chunk of stuff. Now let's talk about your starting modifications you can take for your construct innovation, starting with accelerated mobility. Accelerated Mobility gives your construct a 40 foot movement speed at level one. That's about as fast as a monk with incredible movement at level three. That's really strong. Amphibious Construction gives your construct a 25 foot swim speed, really good in an ocean or water focused campaign. Increased size makes your companion into a large size creature, and if you advance your companion and make it large at a higher level, you can instantly switch this to any other level one modification for free. Manual Dexterity gives your construct the ability to take the manipulate action for various things, picking things up, handing them to people, opening doors, etc. It still can't hold things precisely and use them like a weapon, but it's still pretty cool. Projectile Launcher gives your construct a ranged 1d4 bludgeoning or piercing unarmed attack, which is super cool. It also has a range increment of 30 feet, which is pretty decent. Plus it has the propulsive trait, so it gets to add half of its strength modifier to the damage of the projectile. Sensory Array grants your construct low light and dark vision, as well as tremor sense up to 30 feet, what? And finally, Wonder Gears, which I have a hard time believing is not a Wonder Years reference, gives your construct train proficiency in intimidation, stealth, and survival. All really good modifications. Aside from maybe the swim speed, these would be tough to pick between. And finally, my personal favorite and likely my next character I would play if given the opportunity, the Weapon Inventor. 
Let me describe how this works. You can pick any level 0 or level 1 weapon to be your innovation. If you pick a level 0 weapon, you get it for free and don't need to buy it. If you get a level 1 weapon, you do need to pay the monetary cost. Similarly to the armor innovation, nobody else can wield this weapon except for you. They can, but they will not have any proficiency with it. Also, when you overdrive with your weapon innovation, you can change the bonus damage to fire damage. And it says you can choose to change it. Do you know how big that is? Oh, we're fighting a troll? This time it's fire damage. Oh, we're fighting a fire elemental? This time it's bludgeoning. Simple as that. The weapon you chose is your innovation, and you get to pick one modification which alters that weapon. If you have a ranged weapon as your innovation, you can take Blunt Shot, which allows you to change the damage type to bludgeoning and give it a non-lethal trait. You can choose this on each individual attack, meaning if you have a crossbow loaded, you can choose before firing whether or not you're firing non-lethal at no penalty and changing the damage. If you're fighting something that's resistant to piercing, you can just switch to ranged bludgeoning damage, which is huge. Complex simplicity is great. As long as you're using a simple weapon as your innovation, it bumps the damage die up one step and it gains versatile bludgeoning, piercing, or slashing your choice. Dynamic weighting is pretty good and can only be applied to a one-handed weapon. You give that weapon the two-hand trait, meaning you can optionally put a second hand on your weapon. This will bump the damage die up one step and give it versatile bludgeoning. This is really only useful if you have a one-handed martial weapon, as otherwise complex simplicity is just better. Additionally, this weapon cannot have the Agile attached or freehand trait. Agile is going to be the tough one to get around, but there might be something good like a longsword, you can make some real work out of this. Entangling Form gives your weapon the Grapple and Trip traits. Now that doesn't sound crazy overpowered at first, does it? Well, think of it this way. Those traits allow you to apply the item bonus from your weapon onto those attempts. This means if you have a plus two spear innovation with the trip trait, you now not only get plus two to your trip traits, but because the spear has reach and the trip trait, you can now trip from 10 feet away with that bonus. Mwah! Beautiful. Hampering Spikes is interesting. It grants the weapon versatile piercing and the hampering trait, which I don't think existed before Guns and Gears. Effectively, this gives you an optional action you can take on your turn. You can start thrashing away at a square, and that square next to you becomes difficult terrain. Say, for example, you start thrashing at the square under an opponent, they're now standing in difficult terrain and cannot take the step action. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, attack of opportunity, eh? Modular Head gives your weapon the Modular Trait. This means for a single action on your turn, you can change the damage type of your weapon between bludgeoning, slashing, and piercing. Additionally, when spending that action, you can attach or remove the non-lethal trait. So if you want to kill this guy, but spare this guy, you can stab him with piercing damage, spend an action, switch it to slashing, give it non-lethal, and bonk this guy. You can do that. Also, Modular Head is not restricted to melee weapons. Keep that in mind. Slashing arrows. Pacification Tools is better than Modular Head for the non-lethal options. Not only does it give your weapon the non-lethal trait, but you can choose whether or not to make each individual attack non-lethal. It also gives you the disarm trait, so you can add the item bonus from your weapon to the disarm checks. Not bad. If only disarm wasn't terrible. Razor Prongs. Only on melee weapons, you give your weapon the trip and versatile slashing trait. And finally, Segmented Frame. You once again gain the modular trait, able to switch between bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing, but for one action, you can collapse your weapon into a light bulk form that you can put on your body, and this gives you a plus two bonus to conceal it against prying eyes. This applies to stealth checks to actively hide it, and perception DCs for people to see it. 
Regardless of which innovation you choose, every inventor knows how to make their stuff explode! This is a unique two-action ability available to all inventors right at level 1, and it has a very important trait that needs to be covered. Unstable. Unstable actions are unstable and are very dangerous to you and your innovation. When you take one, you roll a d20 and you have to pass a flat DC 17 check. If you fail, nothing big happens. Your innovation sparks a little bit. It's a little damaged, but nothing immediately happens. Should you fail, your machine malfunctions slightly. The action still goes off as planned, but you cannot take another unstable action. If you crit fail, you also take fire damage equal to your level. Regardless of the failure result, you must spend 10 minutes tinkering with your innovation to be able to start using unstable actions again. So this means most of the time you're only going to get one unstable action per encounter. You can almost think of it like a focus point. If you're lucky and things go well and you roll that 17 or higher, yeah, you can do it again, more power to you. It adds this really risky low chance to have a really strong encounter, but you might want to play on the safe side and assume you only get one. So let's look at the unstable action that every inventor starts with, explode. For two actions, your innovation, explode. Luckily, this doesn't hurt you. All creatures in a 5-foot emanation from you make a reflex save against your class DC or take 2d6 fire damage. This is a basic save, so half on success, double on crit failure, hmm. And just like a spell, at every odd level, your damage increases by 1d6. Pretty cool, this is basically just fireball, based only in a 5-foot emanation of your innovation, but still, that's just level 1 fireball! Important to note, if your innovation is a construct, the explosion is obviously in an emanation of your construct, not yourself. As you level up, you also gain the ability for a 10-foot and 15-foot emanation of the explosion, but what's nice is once you unlock them, you can still choose the size. Even at level 20, you can explode in a 5, 10, or 15-foot emanation, just for those perfectly precise explosions. Obviously, Inventors start with the Inventor skill feat. It'd be really weird if they didn't. They're also one of the few classes that starts with Shield Block, which I think is really cool. It was weird that there weren't enough classes that could really make use of shields without taking a general feat, so it's awesome to see that the Sword and Shield Inventor can actually be a thing. I love it. Obviously, Inventors are a martial class, so they get feats right at first level. Interestingly, a lot of the feats are based on your innovation and various gears and gizmos, so it's a cool line here that at GM discretion, if you've been disarmed and stripped of all your gear, you may lose access to specific feats. If you have feats that let you pull out special devices that do things and you don't have your stuff, well, you might not be able to use that feat and it makes sense. Of course they get skill feats, but right at third level they already upgrade their overdrive. First off, the damage they get from going into overdrive increases by one, and they become an expert in crafting. Just like that, free skill boosts. Hi rogues! What's really important about this is it's a plus one regardless of whether you normal or crit succeed. This makes the normal success overdrive way stronger, bumping you up from two to three damage. You know, going from four to five damage isn't as big a deal, but two to three is a 50% increase. Of course, they get general feats, and then at third level, they get reconfigure. By spending one day of downtime and making a crafting check, you can swap the modification on your innovation to any other available one of the same level. Additionally, at the same time, if you have any feats with the modification trait, you can trade those away for another different modification feat of the same level. Of course, they get skill increases. Ability boosts, ancestry feats, and weapon expertise at 5th level. Not only do you become an expert in your simple and martial weapons, but you also get the crit specialization effect of whatever weapon you have if you're a weapon inventor. 7th level is a huge power spike for the inventor because you get your breakthrough innovation. This allows you to pick a second modification for your innovation, and you can either pick a new one from this list we're about to go over, or if you really want to, you can pick a second one from the initial list. Not bad. 
If you are an armor inventor, you can pick anti-magic plating, giving you a plus one to saving throws against all magic. You also get a plus one to AC against spell attack rolls that target you, and if any spell would specifically target your armor, such as heat metal, you instead get a plus four to your AC or saving throw. If you have the Suchrefuge suit armor, you can take Camouflage Pigmentation, which is so good, you can take the hide action with no cover. If you are in the middle of a crowd and everyone is looking at you, you can take the hide action and your armor will shift like chameleon skin to match the world around you. And if you succeed with your stealth check, you're hidden! For those of you who don't understand how powerful this is, to even successfully target a hidden creature, you need to roll a flat DC 10 check. That's a 50% chance to have all attacks miss you. If your third action on every turn is just to hide, congratulations, you just gave yourself 50% invulnerability to anything that tries to target you. The problem with this is that the same applies to anyone trying to heal you. Also, it doesn't help with area of effect abilities, so, you know, not that broken, but still really good. You can also take Dense Plating, which gives you resistance to slashing damage equal to half your level. That's pretty good. Enhanced Resistance upgrades any of the initial modifications that gave you a specific damage resistance. Instead of that resistance being based on half your level, it is upgraded to your full level. But obviously, in order to take this modification, you do need one of the initial resistance modifications. If you took the Power Suit Armor Innovation, then you can take Heavy Construction, which basically upgrades you to Full Plate. This gives you a plus one to the armor's AC bonus and the Bulwark trait. This trait is phenomenal on a strength-based inventor. If you are making a reflex save against a damaging effect, rather than using your dex modifier, you can just add plus three instead. You still get to add your proficiency, but rather than your zero or plus one dex, you get to add a flat plus three instead. That's great. Hyper boosters! If you have the speed booster modification from level one, you can take this and you just get a flat 10 status bonus, foot move speed bonus, bonus. And if you're in overdrive, it's 20 feet. And once you're a legendary in crafting skill, it's a 30 foot speed bonus. If you're a fleet elf inventor with these two modifications, that's a 65 foot move speed. Ah! Layered Mesh and Tensile Absorption are similar to the slashing resistance from earlier, one giving you resistance to piercing equal to half your level, the other giving you resistance to bludgeoning equal to half your level. These are some of the most common types of damage in the game, which is why they are a higher level modification. For the Construct Inventor, we have Advanced Weaponry. You choose one of your Construct's unarmed attacks, and that attack gains one of the level one weapon innovation modifications. All the ones we talked about earlier for the weapon invention, you can give to your construct. Phenomenal. Anti-magic construction just gives your construct a plus two to all saving throws and armor class against spells. That's nutty. Climbing limbs. Your construct gains a climb speed equal to half its land speed. Great for getting your construct into hard to reach places. Durable Construction gives your construct toughness. It gains hit points equal to your level. Nothing special, but not bad. Marvelous Gears is a direct upgrade to Wonder Gears from level 1, and it increases the proficiency for Intimidation, Stealth, and Survival to Expert. If your construct somehow got those to Expert already via a feat, it will instead improve them to Master. At a higher level, if you get the Revolutionary Innovation class feature, this will automatically bump them up to the next proficiency level. So if they were expert from this, they automatically become master. Or if they were master from this in a feat, they get bumped all the way up to legendary, which is incredible. And turret configuration is an upgrade to the projectile launcher modification from first level. Your construct can spend one action to transform into a turret. This upgrades the damage from projectile launcher to a D6 and gives it a 60 foot range increment instead of 30. The problem here is that your construct is immobilized until it spends another action to shift back. And finally, the weapon modifications. Let's talk ranged with the advanced rangefinder. 
Your ranged weapon's range increment increases by 10 feet, which isn't nothing, and it gains the backstabber trait. So long as you are shooting a flat-footed target, they take bonus damage equal to your number of weapon damage die. That's just really good. Ranged weapons struggle to get bonus damage, so even two or three bonus damage goes a long way. <laughs> goes a long way. Like a ranged weapon. Aerodynamic construction gives your weapon the sweep trait and versatile slashing. Eh. Inconspicuous appearance gives your melee weapon the backstabber trait, like we talked about before, and versatile piercing. Additionally, if your weapon was already of light bulk, it gains the concealable trait, making it harder to detect on your person. Not bad. I feel like I've been saying not bad a lot this episode, but I think it's just because we're covering so much stuff, but it all gets covered so fast that I'm redundant. <laughs> Integrated Gauntlet is really cool. It is only for one-handed weapon innovations, but it gives it the free hand trait. This means the weapon is now built into your armor and arm, so you can still use the hand holding it to do things. However, if the hand is currently holding something, you cannot attack with the weapon. So even with the weapon drawn, you can draw a potion, drink it, and then attack with it once you're no longer holding the potion, all without letting go of your weapon. Very nice. Manifold Alloy. Your weapon innovation now counts as cold iron and silver for the purposes of monster weaknesses. That's, that's just really good and cool and flavorful. Rope Shot. Your ranged weapon gains the climbing and ranged trip traits. These are both new traits that came out in this book. Climbing means you can use the hand that is holding the weapon in order to climb. So if a hand crossbow has the climb trait, it doesn't hinder your ability to climb a wall. The range trip trait is exactly what it sounds like. You can make an athletics check to trip someone so long as they are within the weapon's first range increment. You also take a minus two on this check. And finally, tangle line is a modification only for thrown weapons. I don't know really why this is a modification, as it literally just means you tied a rope to your thrown weapon. Basically, when you make a thrown weapon attack, you can spend an additional action to pull it back and re-grab it. What is nice is it also gives that thrown weapon the ranged trip trait, which is useful. Also at level 7, inventors get Expert in Reflex Save, Weapon Specialization, and Master Overdrive, increasing their overdrive damage by another one point, and giving them master proficiency in crafting. Level seven is just huge for inventors. Level nine not only increases their class DC to expert, but also grants them offensive boost. Offensive boost is sort of a modification that does the same thing regardless of your subclass. You pick one of the available damage types and all of your attacks with your weapon or armor or construct deal 1d6 additional damage of that damage type. Specifically, if you are an armor inventor, you pick one weapon during daily preparations and that weapon gets the damage bonus. Remember though, you can only pick one damage type and you can change it, but it's the same way as changing a modification. You must spend a full day of downtime and a crafting check to change the damage types. The damage types available to you are cold damage, fire damage, electricity, bludgeoning, slashing, piercing, and acid damage. So if you really want to, you can just double down on the same type of damage. If you have a great sword, you can just deal 1d6 extra slashing damage with it. No one's going to tell you not to. Well, that's not true. The internet would probably tell you not to, but I won't. At 11th level, medium armor proficiency goes up to expert, and if you're an armor innovation inventor, you get the crit spell... Oh, it's called crit specialization. Wait. Wait a second. I think this is a typo. I believe this is supposed to say you gain access to the armor specialization effect of your armor innovation because armor doesn't have a crit specialization. Since both of the power armors are of the composite armor group, they get resistance to piercing damage equal to one plus the potency rune of the armor. That's a weird typo and it really threw me off. Level 11 also bumps will saves up to master and automatically crit succeeds normal successes and perception gets increased to expert, finally. Level 13 gives the inventor master proficiency with weapons, which is really, really good, but it also gives them complete reconfiguration, meaning when you spend a day of downtime, you no longer have to spend an individual day for each individual thing you want to change. Instead, one day of downtime lets you change as much as you want 
from your innovation. Any number of modification feats, any number of modifications from class features, all at the same time. Really nice. Level 15, greater weapon specialization, legendary and crafting automatically, and another bonus damage from Overdrive. At this point, Overdrive is dealing your intelligence modifier plus three in extra damage. At level 15, that's probably eight bonus damage, not counting the eight you're gonna get from legendary weapon specialization. Six, whatever. Yeah, at level 15, an inventor is just hitting for a flat bonus, I think, 14 damage on every attack as long as you have a 20 intelligence. That's gross. All right, let's talk about the real capstone of the inventor, the 15th level revolutionary innovation. One more modification choice, and boy are these some doozies. For the armor innovation, automated impediments. All spaces adjacent to you are difficult terrain. Not only that, but they're only difficult terrain for your enemies. Your allies can stand next to you just fine, but if it's an enemy, oh boy, they're not going anywhere. Energy Barrier does have a prerequisite. You need to have picked one of the energy resistance modifications from first level. But if you did, you can take Energy Barrier, and you gain resistance equal to 2 plus half your level to all energy damage. That's pretty much all damage except for alignment and physical. That's massive. Incredible Resistance upgrades one of the level 7 modifications that gave you either piercing, bludgeoning, or slashing resistance. This upgrades it from half your level to your full level, giving you 15 resistance to one type of physical damage. Could come in amazing, useful, and make you unkillable, could be completely useless. At higher levels, it's tough to say what you're going to encounter. Multisensory Mask for the Suchervuge suit makes you mostly permanently concealed. While concealed, you have a 25% chance to just avoid all attacks. The only time the concealment goes away is when you take a hostile action, and you can re-conceal yourself for a single action. No skill check, no enemy saving throws, you just spend an action and you go all blurry again. This is incredible. Perfect fortification, only for the power suit. When something critically hits you, you get to make a flat DC 13 check. If you succeed, that critical hit becomes a normal hit. Additionally, you get 2 plus half your level as resistance against precision damage. This doesn't sound like a lot, that's only going to be maybe 8 or 9 resistance, but keep in mind, resistance to precision damage, unless you're an ooze, is almost impossible to come by. That's incredible. Physical protection grants you resistance to bludgeoning, piercing, and slashing damage. On top of that, it also grants this resistance to persistent bleed damage, all equal to half your level. However, in order to take this, you do need one of the level 7 modifications that gave you resistance to piercing, bludgeoning, or slashing in the first place. And the last modification available for armor inventors is probably the coolest one, rune capacity. Normally, you can only have as many property runes as the number of your potency rune. If you have a plus three armor, you can only have three property runes. With rune capacity, you get an additional property slot. If you have a plus three set of armor, you can now have four property runes. This means that the armor innovator can have this crazy set of armor. Think about it. All the modifications with four property runes? That is going to be a complex item. In my opinion, Construct Inventors got the short end of the stick when it comes to level 15 modifications, but they're not bad. First off, flight. You give your Construct a 25-foot flight speed. That's not bad at all. Miracle Gears is sort of an upgrade to the previous Gears feat, though it's kind of unrelated. First off, your Construct becomes sentient. It gains a plus two to its intelligence modifier. But the big, big, big thing? Your construct becomes legendary in two intelligence or charisma-based skills. Even if it was untrained, it skyrockets to legendary. That's fantastic. Resistant coding is honestly boring, but just really good. Your construct gains five resistance to all damage. Except adamantine. But unless they have adamantine, all damage. Runic Keystone is okay. 
you are allowed to inscribe one property rune onto your construct. If it's an armor property rune, it acts as if your construct was wearing a suit of armor with that property rune with none of the actual armor benefits. If it's a weapon, it applies to its unarmed strikes. If the rune in any way, shape, or form would alter the appearance of your construct, for some reason it has no effect, and I'm not quite sure why. The example they give is the Glamoured rune, which makes your armor appear different, but for some reason, you can't Glamour rune your construct, and I don't really see why. I don't think that would be overpowered, and I think it would just be fun to make your construct look like he was wearing like a suit and tie. It'd be cute. And finally, wall configuration. For two actions, your construct be 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 becomes a wall. It's 10 feet high, it's 30 feet long, and it's a wall. While in this form, your construct can't take any actions. However, you can use it for really good cover. Uh, if your innovation happens to hit half hit points or less, there become holes in the wall that creatures can fire through and tiny creatures can slip through. Honestly, I don't see why this is a level 15 modification. It's cool, don't get me wrong. It's cool, it's fun, it's flavorful. Deployable cover is great. But why is it level 15? You are an inventor with a construct companion. That means you are relying primarily on your companion, not necessarily, but your companion is likely what you want to do a lot of bonus damage and effects. This gets rid of your companion, but leaves it in danger with a minus two penalty to armor class. Sure, it gives you cover, but this removes your action economy and removes a target and member of your team. I don't know, this is, this is unfortunate. I don't think it's that worth it. Maybe I'm missing something here. Let me know in the comments if there's something crazy powerful about this I'm not understanding. And finally, the weapon innovation modifications for level 15, starting with attack refiner. Your innovation gets the backswing and shove traits. Kind of okay. If you miss an attack, your next attack gets a plus one to hit. If you put this on an agile weapon, that's pretty good because there's no agile weapons with backswing currently, so that could be really cool and accurate. Deadly strike. Your innovation gains the deadly D8 trait. And if it already had deadly, it gets deadly D12 instead. If you critically hit, you deal a bonus damage die of that size. Not bad. Only useful on a crit, but not bad. Stop saying not bad. Get more creative. Say, that's pretty cool, or I enjoy that, or that's kind of interesting. Just stop saying not bad. Enhanced damage just flat out increases the damage die of your weapon. Now, of course, you cannot stack this with something like Deadly Simplicity, as the rules state a weapon's damage die can only be bumped up once. But what this does mean is you can do this to a weapon that is not normally able to be done. So if you have a D10 weapon, you can make it a D12, and you're level 15, so you have three damage die. So 3D10 becoming 3D12 is kinda cool. Overall though, this one isn't the best compared to the others. I will say enhanced damage on a ranged weapon is great. Bumping a longbow up to a D10 instead of a D8, that's kinda huge. Extensible weapon, you give a melee weapon reach. If it already had reach, it gets five more feet of reach. Yes, 15 foot reach long spear, hello. Impossible alloy, your weapon innovation counts as all seven rare sky medals when it comes to capitalizing on opponent's weaknesses. Just Oh, if you're fighting extra planar enemies, this is a must take. Momentum Retainer. You gain forceful and versatile bludgeoning on your innovation. Forceful meaning if you attack more than once, the second attack deals one bonus damage per weapon damage die. Omni Range Stabilizers is not super exciting. If you have something like a longbow and it has the volley trait, this just gets rid of the volley trait, allowing you to attack in close range with no penalty. If it doesn't have the volley trait, it increases your range increment by 50 feet which is pretty good. If the range increment of the base weapon is longer than 50 feet, it increases it by that instead. This basically doubles your range increment. So honestly, this is basically good on everything but volley weapons. Getting rid of volley, not super exciting. Doubling the range of each of your range increments, that's huge. And just like the armor, Rune capacity lets you put one more property rune than your fundamental runes number. It's just cool for another really crazy, wild property weapon.
Level 17 increases class DC to master, and fortitude saves to master, and auto crit succeeds, fortitude saves successes. And finally, level 19, I don't want to talk about it. Well, first off, you get master proficiency in medium armor, which is good. But infinite invention, I have a lot of feelings. First off, during your daily preparations, if your innovation was destroyed or broken, it is automatically repaired to fighting fit full health. That's great. It's the next line that kind of gets under my skin. And you can change to a different innovation. If you were a construct inventor since level one, you've cared for this thing, you've repaired it, you've tinkered with it, and you've improved and augmented it for the last two years of your campaign, and you're finally level 19, then the next day you can wake up and turn it into a hammer. And then the next day you can wake up and turn it into a suit of armor. And then back to a hammer, and then back to a robot dog. I really don't like this. And let me tell you why. If you wanted to hear more about the class, you'll find that in part two, because this part's over as far as mechanical explanations are concerned. Thanks to patrons, I'm just going to start rambling here. I love Pathfinder 2e because of its class identity. Every class feels unique because it does something unique. And within those classes, each subclass is so unique. The armor inventor is completely different from the weapon inventor, is completely different from the construct inventor. And playing through, you could have three inventors in the same party and they would all feel completely different until level 19, when every single day, they can just swap to each other's subclass, and they are all effectively playing the same character. That is what I have a problem with. That is why I do not like Infinite Invention. Once you are level 19, all inventors are the same. I think before level 19, Inventor might be either my second or most favorite class in the game. After level 19, it is easily my least favorite, simply from a mechanical game design, gameplay experience. Obviously, people aren't going to just play the same inventor. You know, maybe there is a strongest inventor, but the chances of there being A, multiple inventors in the same game, B, that game being level 19 or 20, and C, those inventors changing subclasses that late. Like, let's talk about that. Why would you play a character all the way to 19 and then want to change your subclass? You know, you played with that weapon innovation, your baby from level one. Why would you change your whole character overnight? I don't, I could talk about this for hours, but I won't because I've already been recording for an hour and 20 minutes. I didn't expect this to be a two-parter, but it is, and I'm just full of emotions and Paizo, I love you, but I hate this class feature. <sighs> Thank you to Roll for Combat for sponsoring the video. Go check out the link in the description to check out their Kickstarter. Pre-order the books now to get a discount. They'll be more expensive when they come out. I, uh, I'm going to go lie down. We have merch. You should buy some merch. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no Nat Walks.